YouTube family. How are you? I am here again with another study time video. I'm trying to make this be as unique as possible. Um, I have not seen any YouTubers reading directly from um, the notary signing Egypt book. And so, but this is to teach, to help, to share, to grow all together because there's enough for everyone. Anyway, yesterday we did our fifth video and today is Friday, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All right, so Saturday we will be answering that question um, that was in my first or second video. You have to go back um, and check it out. Anyway, we're on part three today. And we're talking about preparing for the assignment. This is extremely important for your business. All right. So once you have landed the assignment, the preparation process begins. In this lesson, we will review guiding principles related to preparing documents, including the importance of clients' confidentiality and other privacy concerns. We will also review all ways to prepare a script to use when contacting or conducting a signing. So the first thing, which is number one, we're going to focus on privacy and confidentiality. And it says, before you begin your signing, prepare the documents for the signing. You will want to review in detail the code guiding principles six which focuses on privacy and confidentiality. It is vital that you respect the privacy of each signer and protect the loan documents from unauthorized disclosure. Here are additional key concepts when it comes to ensuring the security and accuracy of all documents. Non-disclosure of signer information. Never disclose the transaction or personal information of a signer to any person not directly a party of the transaction. So if they're not a party in the transaction, you're not disclosing nada. Uh, don't leave documents out on coffee shop tables or even at home, not to your family members, husband, spouse, kids. Nobody can see these documents. They are confidential. Even at home, if a signer wants to share their business, they will share the information themselves. Scrutiny of documents. Do not inspect or examine the closing documents beyond what you need in order to determine the requirements and conditions for the assignment and complete all journal entries. Once you completed your journal entries and checked the document to make sure there are no blank spaces, the dates and names are correct, and other details related to the notarization, stop there. It's not your responsibility to go beyond this level of review. Reception, delivery, access, printing of documents. Whenever practical, you should strive to receive any, deliver all documents, packages in person. Let's read that again. Whenever practical, you should strive to receive and deliver all loan documents in person via secure means. Do not delegate the responsibility of downloading, printing loan documents. Do not share access instructions, including passwords, websites for the purpose of viewing, downloading, or printing loan documents. Don't ask family members to download and print documents in order to save them. Do not ask your spouse to print documents or bring them to you or any of that. That's going to be an test. So if the answer is no, it's no. Um, compromise security documents. Always ensure that package of loan documents are properly sealed upon reception and delivery. Keep them under either personal control or lock them under a key. Immediately advise the contracting company of any circumstances leading you to believe the content of the package have been compromised. 
If a package arrives unsealed, contact the contracting company immediately and let them know. Unprotected network. Unprotected network. Never use a public or unsecured computer network or fax machine to retrieve or print communication in connection with a signing assignment as they could be hacked or otherwise tampered with. If you have a portable printer, don't use the free wireless connection in your local mall or any place to download the documents. This could compromise safety of data. Transmission or reception of non-public personal information. Always use encryption, strong password, and other secure delivery methods to send or receive closing documents or communications concerning or containing a signer's non-public personal information. Be smart about the passwords. Make sure they are not easy to figure out. The biggest rule to remember when it comes to preparing for a signer is to pay attention to detail and deliver all the promises that you have stated that you would do. All right, now, principle nine focuses on professionalism. And here are some key expert excerpts, <laughs> excuse me, related to specifically to uh, the preparation. Review of all documents, review the loan documents prior to signing appointments to confirm that the documents identify the correct signing parties or parties and determine which documents must be signed, dated, in, initialed, and notarized. You are pressed for time. Always review the documents for potential errors that are arising during your um, signing appointment. Notification of missing documents. Immediately contact the closing agent prior to the appointment if you discover the note, mortgage, or deed, trust in lending, disclosure, or closing documents is either incomplete or missing from the document package. Arriving at the signing table with a document missing waste your time and will be considered your error. Appointment confirmation. Confirm the appointment to sign loan documents with the signer, ensuring that all parties and witnesses signing documents and check when applicable will be available upon the agent's arrival unless expressly prohibited by the contracting company. Read the instructions carefully so that you know what to ask the signer to have on hand. An appropriate ID will stop an inappropriate ID will stop the appointment in its tracks. Professional communication. Always keep your verbal and written communication professional in both tone and demeanor. If you get angry, take a moment to compose yourself before reaching out to any business contact. Wow, <laughs> that's important. Notification of late arrival. If you're running late, notify the signer and contracting company providing the assignment at least 30 minutes prior. If you hit an unexpected traffic jam on your way to the appointment, reach out sooner than later to let others know you may be running late and behind schedule. Don't let this become a habit though because that right there will put a dent in your business. All right. Two, report any illegal or suspicious activities. As you prepare for your assignment, it is your responsibility to be aware um, and report any potential illegal or suspicious activity that you encounter. The Code Guide Principle 5 focuses on this issue and offer the following rules and guidelines. False document or certification, beware of the lenders representing contacting company, closing agent, signer, and other person is not permitted to falsify information in closing documents or certification of a notarial act. 
If you see a certificate pre-printed or false information, do not use that certificate. So if a loan agent asks you or anyone asks you, can you please notarize, sign, stamp this blank document and send it back to me? So if the company instructed you to do that, you would have to let them know that it's prohibited and you cannot do that. And they know better. But they may try to pull that on a new signer. So you got to be careful. Approval of power of attorney signing. The notary signing agent will not commence an appointment involving an attorney, in fact, for an absent principal unless specifically approved by the lender, representative, or closing agent for the transaction. If the person at appearing to sign before you is not the principal signer you are expecting, you should call the contracting company right away because the signer is always supposed to be present right? They will need some power of attorney documents. They need some legal documents saying that they are authorized because that person is whatever. Okay. So incompetent documents. Did I say incompetent? No. Incomplete documents is what I meant. I'm moving a little fast here. I have like 10 minutes left. So incomplete documents. This is volunteer time. I am teaching. I am sharing. We are learning together and I am reading directly from the book so that you can pass your exam. Okay. This is why I'm doing it. This is my time that I am donating to my community of diversity people and cultural people so that we can all learn. Cause like I said, there is enough for everyone. All right. Now I have nine minutes left. Okay. So immediately contact the lending representative and closing agent for the transaction if any loan documents required to be notarized is incomplete or contain blank, blank spaces. As with any notarization, blank spaces are always a cause for concern, whether it's missing a date, name, beware, the use of absence is resolved before you Offer the official notarization. So if you see anything that's blank, call the lender. Anything that's that doesn't look like it's supposed to be, even if you don't know, call the lender. Because you want to make sure, because it's going to fall back on you, because you have the documents and you should have seen it, right? You should have paid attention. All right, so uh, you don't want to be blamed for something that maybe they should have taken care of and you didn't find it or catch it, you still will be blamed, okay? Okay. Presentation of entire document. Present all pages of the document, not just the signature page. This is why I say that it's important that you guide the signer through it page by page. And if you go page by page and you look page by page from top to bottom, you'll see all the spaces that should be initial and signed. Therefore, you don't miss anything. All right. So, so make sure this is important that you inspect all the pages. Okay. During the signing appointment, it is not the time to cut corners. Even if the signer asks to see only the signature page, remind them that it is your job to present all the documents for their review. Evidence and tampering. Immediately contact the lender representative and closing agent for the transaction if you believe that the documents are notarial certificate has been tampered with or altered. If you spot any red flags, suspicious cross outs, or information printed underneath other numbers, for example, halt the signing and contact the appropriate closing agent before proceeding. Disclosure of wrongdoing. Never conceal knowledge of a criminal act. You hear that? Never conceal knowledge of a criminal act committed in connection with the signing with the signing assignment. If you are aware of a criminal act and has been committed, immediately notify a lawful authority. Call the police. <laughs> if you halt a signing due to suspicions of a fake ID, be sure to report the issue to the appropriate authorities. Police. One final note, once you have already accepted the assignment, assignment, you must never refuse to perform the assignment. So if you tell somebody that you're going to do an assignment for $200 and it's an hour away, you better go. You better go. 
And if you didn't add your printing fees and all the other fees that go along with that, you still better go. You just know to do better next time. This is why it's important to perform. I'm sorry. This is why it's important to confirm fees prior to the assignment. See the code principle seven for more information. All right. We have five minutes left, so I'm going to use this as the talking time. Tomorrow, when we come on, it is going to be Saturday. We're going to be answering the question from video uh, one or two. Just go back and check it out. There is a question that is on the exam that I'm going to give you the answer to. So come on back on Saturday so that you can hear this. All right. After we answer that question, we're going to go on to part four, which is conducting the assignment. OK, so that'll be part four. And um, I just want to say thank you guys for studying with me. I am really enjoying myself learning again, relearning the information that I already know. We're never. Listen, I'm a lifelong learner. You have to get that in your mind. Become a lifelong learner. Be okay with learning something new. Be okay with rereading and learning what you've already learned again so that you can be an expert in what it is that you're trying to do. Please remember, you are an entrepreneur, meaning you are a business owner. So you have to represent your business professionally, do it with a smile, confidently, and you go out there and you make your money, make your business grow so that you can leave a legacy for your kids, so that you can build for your kids. A lot of us don't come from the financial background where we were learned to budget and we were taught to do what we needed to do. Um, we're not born with silver spoons, gold spoons, any of that in our mouths um, like other communities are. I read something that said that um, our Caucasian uh, sisters and brothers are $171,000 ahead of us financially. And in our African-American community and brown community, we're less. We're like 17000 behind. We're so far behind financially because we don't save, because we don't have investments, because we don't um, have a relationship. Excuse me. We don't have a relationship with money. You have to have a relationship with money. You have to learn to budget. You have to stop overspending. Stop buying all these expensive things that you don't need. You're living in an apartment, but you got a Bentley parked out. That's not okay because it's not about what you can show. It's about what you can do for your family. Um, and, and that's just about it. All of us can be high earners. It just really depends on you and what you want to do and how you want your business to grow. One of my favorite people is Elon Musk. The reason why is because he's very frugal. Um, from what I can see, he's very down to earth. Um, Actually, his his Tesla business and uh, SpaceX is not that far from where I live, but um, just very down to earth. And that's what you want to be. You want to be down to earth. You want to have a teacher's heart. You want to be giving. You want to be willing to share. You want to be give, be willing to do all those things. If your business consists of teaching people and you're providing information, making sh make sure you're providing information that's not public information because I think that it is unfair to charge someone for public information, okay? Uh, if it's public, then it should be free. You should be willing to share it because it's public. Now, if it's something that you're selling or something that you're teaching that's not public, I think it's appropriate to charge people for that. And I think people will pay for that because you are good at your craft. You are teaching them something that no one else knows about. It is not public. It cannot be found. So therefore, you can start a class about that. You know what I mean? Um but a lot of this stuff is not public information. And um, there are a lot of teachers, a lot of great teachers. So when you see teachers and they're saying that they're having classes and they're charging for these classes, go and check it out. Research it first. Make sure it's not public information. If it's not public information, if you want to learn it, go for it. Go for it. Because in this book, as I will tell you, the loan documents are in here. The loan documents, everything is in this book. I'm telling you, you just have to be willing to invest into yourself and read. You are an entrepreneur. This is your business. You have to put 110%. Even if that means you're working seven days a week, it's your business. It's for you. Build. Elon Musk said something about 
have an account in the beginning in his office that he did not want to rent an apartment and that he rented an office space and he slept in that office space and went to the gym to take shower. He built his businessman as rich. And if you want to follow in those footsteps, like Warren Buffett, you know, they're investing their money for the long term and all that good stuff, do it. You can do it. I believe in you. And thank you for coming. And I hope you've learned something from me today. Everything that I teach is public information and it is free. Bye.